All right, today we're gonna do the uh, tarpon bunny. Uh, we're gonna try a color I haven't tried yet. I'm gonna use this uh, tiger barred uh, magnum bunny strip to tie it, and this purple and fuchsia, and see what the tarpon think of that. So we jumped about a hundred pound tarpon on the beach this afternoon, and hopefully we can jump another one tomorrow morning. First thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and get our purple thread started here. The uh, hook we're using is a Gamagatsu SL12 short, but you could use whatever your favorite tarpon hook is. This is just the tarpon hook I like to use. It's really strong. I've never bent one, never broke one. And uh, normally I get a really good hookup ratio with it. Uh, I believe this is a size, this is a 2 0. First thing we're going to do is just get some red cactus chenille. Just cut a little bit of that off. We're just going to put some back here on the bend of the hook. Just to look like some little gills. You know, just give a little bit of a uh, different color on this fly. Uh, really an optional step. I think it helps the, the bunny stand up just a little bit. But it's not something you, uh, you have to have or you need to have out here. So we're just going to take this and just do like we do with a lot of our flies and just palmer it right around the hook shank. Now we don't want to go all the way onto the straight part of the hook. We just want to just get a little section here on the bend of the hook. So that's probably good right there. We're going to throw it back and we'll, uh, ah, my thread got caught there. Let's go this way. And we'll just tie this off here. So. Alright. We'll just wrap back on it. Just make sure it's in there good and secure. Next thing we're going to do is get our monofilament. This is a 50 pound mason hard mono. Uh, this is going to be used to uh, keep our bunny strip in place. We're going to put it on the hook like this and then fold it over. That way it holds the bunny strip. If you like to do the little loop here on the back, the little mono loop where it goes around like that, also good. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do to keep the uh, the bunny strip from fouling. Uh, I don't know if any of, her, any of them are truly better than the other, but this is just going to be the method that we use. So we're just going to mash down a little piece of our mono here on the end with our pliers and then tie it in on the hook. And you just want to check and make sure the piece of mono is lined up straight with the hook. It is. Let's wrap back on it. There we go. Next thing we'll do is we'll get some of our uh, Magnum Bunny here. Really like this color. I wish I had a really nice purple uh, Arctic uh, fox tail, but unfortunately I do not. So. Find a nice section of this bunny here. That was a good section. Uh, to start off, I typically cut it a little bit longer just to make sure I get a good section in there. I'm gonna get right where the purple starts and I'm gonna start tying in right there on the back of the hook. So I'm gonna tie some wraps going forward here. Come back over those wraps. You want to just make these nice and tight so your bunny's not going to go anywhere on you. Now we can just come in here, flip out the rest of that rabbit. I'm going to flip it over and we're going to take our uh, botkin here. It's a nice sharp botkin from uh, Loon. I'm going to go about an inch behind the uh, fly here and we're just going to poke a hole right through the hide. And we'll take our monofilament 
and we'll run it through that hole and we'll just get it to go just to make sure it stays straight right through the eye and eh, fill out anyways just kind of make sure you don't want to make this too tight when you bring it back over you want to make sure the bunny can kind of move around just a little bit on it that looks good and then we're just going to tie down this piece of monofilament here Give it some nice tight wraps because you don't want this monofilament to pull out. We'll cut off our excess monofilament. And we'll take a little bit of Loctite and just put it on those thread wraps just to make sure that monofilament isn't going to go anywhere on us. Alright. Give it a few more thread wraps just to really secure it on there. You can make the tail as long as you want. If you're going for smaller tarpon, you can make a smaller tail. If you're going for bigger tarpon, you can make a bigger tail if you'd like. Uh, I generally like to make it about three or four inches long. Come to the back there, just kind of trim it off. That should work. The next thing we're going to get is our medium Palmer Schneel. And let me just find a little section of this. This you don't really have to worry about. It's not going to show through too much once you put the uh, Arctic Fox on there. But we're just going to tie it off here on the back of the hook and then Palmer it forward. Really all it's doing is just propping the uh, Arctic Fox up once we put it on. And then once it gets in the water, it will show a little bit of flash, but for the most part, it's gonna be covered up. So we get our hackle pliers here. I probably cut off way more than I needed, but and we'll just go ahead and Palmer forward. Let's get each wrap to let it lay back on itself. I've also used uh, like an EP minnow head brush for this step. Um, works all right. I find it makes it a little bit more bulky. Uh, so I mean, if you are looking for a little bit more bulk in your fly, that's you know a place you can go with it as well. That should be enough wraps there. Let's go ahead and tie this off. Trying to get it to lay straight for me here. And we'll just tie back on our chenille just a little bit. So, next thing we're going to do is get our Arctic Fox tails. I highly suggest going online and buying a full tail like this. I mean, it's it's hard to find an Arctic Fox this Arctic Fox tail this long uh, from any fly shop. Um, this is probably out of all the tails I have. These are probably the longest fibers. I've ever gotten. Uh, sometimes it's a little annoying actually having the longer fibers just because I have to trim them down so much but we'll go on to the bottom section of this tail here and get some of the shorter fibers out first. So You just want to take a little clump you don't need very much at a time. We'll end up using two clumps on this fly one for the top and one for the bottom. So we'll cut this little section out first and all we're going to do is just take our butts out with our 
brush. I'll just comb with our brush. And took a good little bit of that out of there. You know I mean, you can always get some out with your hands as well. That just takes a lot of the bulk on the head out of the fly. So, all we're gonna do is just kind of measure where we want this. I like it just to go a little bit beyond the uh, the cactus chenille. We'll try to get this to cover about half the hook. We'll come down and tie this in here. I don't know how that looks on the other side. We're not going to cut that out just yet. We're going to do the bottom side before we cut it out. That way we can uh, cut the top and bottom a little bit more even. So We'll go back to our uh, Arctic Fox tail here. We'll get another small bundle. Probably a little too much there. Again, we got another little bundle, and we'll just repeat the same step that we did before. We'll comb it out, get all those butt sections out, all that under fur. Make sure that uh, you know you can see all that that we got out of there. That's all stuff that we don't need in the fly. We'll just pick out as much as we can. There we go. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom as we did on the top. Just get it to come a little bit further than the Palmer Schneel. Kind of get it where we want it. And just tie down on it. This time you just want to check and go all the way around the fly and make sure you know you covered the entire fly the way you wanted. You take your bock and kind of move the uh, kind of move the fibers around where you want them to be, and then just make sure your thread lines up for your head here. And you can come for your butt sections here on the front and just kind of trim them out. I like to make a pretty big head. I like to use this entire area, so we're just going to go ahead and and build up a head section for this fly. Use a lot of thread wraps just to build this thing up. Not completely necessary, but I like it. I mean, you could you could really fish it as it is and not put eyes on it, but I like to put the eyes on it and make it look a little bit nicer. I'll admit the eyes on this fly probably uh, catch the fishermen more than the fish, but since we're in the business of selling flies, we gotta uh, make flies that do catch some fishermen once in a while. But great thing about this fly, the tarpon also like it, so. Good enough. If I can find my whip finish tool, there we go. And we'll just whip finish this on the front here. All right. And the last thing we're going to do is add eyes. We have these uh, these little six millimeter uh, 3D eyes from uh, Fly Tire Dungeon. So. We're just going to turn this fly on its side. And we'll pick, an, pick one of these eyes off here. And we're just going to add just a little drop of Loctite gel. Or what? A lot of Loctite gel. That My Loctite came out a little faster. Yeah, of course, now it's stuck to my finger. Uh, definitely use too much Loctite there. 
and that's the one problem with you getting too much Loctite gel on there so we're gonna have to start that process over let's try it without getting all that Loctite on there okay Got one on one side, it's uh, a little low. We'll try not to stick it to my finger this time. You know, with my other can of Loctite, maybe it has a little more in it, so I will squirt it all over the fly this time. There we go. All you need is a little bit on this. Just enough to get the eye to hold there. There we go. That's relatively lined up. All right. Happy enough with it for the C trial that I'm going to give it tomorrow. So the last thing we're going to do is just take a little bit of Loon UV Thick. We're going to put it here between the eyes. Just make sure those eyes hold really well. some on the top, a little on the bottom. Make sure this will spin. And we'll hit it with our UV light. And we'll come back with a little bit of uh, Deer Creek Fine Flex just for the nose section of this fly. We don't need the uh, we don't need the loon thick for this portion. It'll make it a little bit too thick, so we can just apply this Fine Flex. Nice little increments here. Just get it all over that head. And again. I don't know why my, my vice is not staying still on me today, but I must have something under the vice that I don't know about. So we'll hit it again with our UV light. So now our thread wraps are nice and covered up. And the very last step, I'll just be getting a little loon flow on here. And I'll just take away any tackiness, kind of just make it, give it a nice little shine, and uh, make sure all the UV products are kind of just nice and melded together. Again, give it a couple spins, and hit it with our UV light. And that's it. That's the uh, that's the tarpon bunny. So we'll see how this uh, this purple and fuchsia color does tomorrow. Hopefully, it uh, scores me a nice tarpon. If you like the video, uh, please subscribe to our channel. You know, share the video as much as we can. We're still running a uh, we're still running the contest for once we get to 250 or uh, I'm sorry, 350 subscribers. Uh, we have a giveaway, so we got a bunch of fly materials and flies that we're giving away. It's close to $100 value. So if you haven't already uh, subscribed to the channel, please do. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.